Hey, what's going on, guys? This is JK from the Base Bar Band here to give you this week's breakdown. And uh, this week, <clears throat> I was going through the statistics on uh, MLB.com as as I do often, just to kind of see what's going on with exit velocities, launch angles, this, that, and the other. And I just came along. I just clicked on average exit velocity for the year so far, 2017. And uh, Miguel Sano came up, and I wanted to do a breakdown of him just because, on average, he's hitting the ball 100 miles an hour. And he's the only one in the hundreds right now on, on, on average. I'm sure that will go down a little bit as the season goes on. Um, now, he doesn't have the highest. Um, so if I click on exit velocity, obviously the highest would be players like Aaron Judge, Trumbo, Brad Miller, Hosmer, 119, 118, 118, so on. But averaging 100 is pretty impressive, I think, especially at the big level, big league level. And, uh, you know, after that, it's Chris Davis at 97. So he's only one in the hundreds right now. Uh, he's got seven homers. He's having a pretty good year so far. Uh, you know, he's only been in the league a couple years, so he's looking pretty good. Um, you know, 18 homers his first year, 25 last year, so he's trending up. Uh, batting average is okay, but he's going to be a guy that's looked to probably, you know, hit more, you know, homers, RBIs, doubles, strike out probably some more than other guys, so that's okay. And uh, so we got a swing here, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to play it through for you guys real quickly um, so that you can just kind of see it from the front view real quick. There it is. And then uh, if we slide down a little bit further to the uh, side view, you know, it's a little bit quick. You have to kind of be, you know, quick to see it, I guess, because of the way the instant replays are. But we're going to start off with the front view here. And like always, you know, we always kind of look at the load and kind of the way the the uh, the, the batter gets their ball bat ready to go here. And the pitcher's mechanics look pretty terrible. I don't know who that is off the top of my head, but that's looking pretty bad. But anyway, so um, he has a nice little knee lift here, which is good. Uh, it's not overwhelming. It's not, uh, you know, it, it's, it's no no Batista, which is fine. Everybody's a little different. That's where you as a player, if you're listening or a coach, can can help a player get kind of figure out their own style. And it may change over the years. And, and uh, you know, leg lifts, toe taps, things like that can all be interchangeable. The, 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 uh, the inner workings of the swing and how the separation happens and, and where the head has to be, all that's really inarguable. Those are truths and facts. But, but the head or the, uh, the barrel tips and knee kicks and toe taps, all that kind of stuff you can figure out as you go along and uh, I really like it because you can see how he has like a little bit of a barrel tip if you look at the watch the barrel and it's, it's late and he's not you know it's not overwhelmingly big but it's just kind of late right there he kind of tips the bat in so the bat is very vertical okay as his knee starts to go down the bat is extremely vertical knob is almost pointed straight down maybe towards uh, the catcher a little bit too so he's got a really vertical bat uh, kind of pointed over his head a little bit and then when he goes to really open his hips, you can see where it starts to move. You can see him really start to put his foot down, uh, maybe a little bit closed more than I, than we would like per se. He's a big dude. Um, you know, he's uh, he's he's not afraid to use his size. Uh, you know, he's 6'4", 260, uh, pretty round guy. So you know, again with the mechanical flaw there, he's he's able to make up with that with talent, uh, coordination, and obviously size. But uh, still something that we'd obviously we would teach against or, or not pull for for our players to do just because of the, the knee, uh, the, the, the injurious nature of that grinding on that knee, the hip um, and the ankle and the closed closed joints like that trying to turn open. You can see kind of imagine what because his knee, his foot's not really giving any to the left and rolling out as he turns. So you can only imagine what's going on inside of his knee right there in his hip. So hopefully he, he stays away from injury. It's not a guarantee, but it's just, you know, we'd rather not put ourselves in injurious positions. Um, but an, a great job here of just the the domino effect uh, progression through the swing here. So you're going to see the foot at the ground, right? The hips are already starting to open and the shoulder's still closed. So he's in a separated position, all right? And then this is key, right? If he doesn't get in a separated position, he's not loaded up. So his hips are facing towards the third baseman right there, That his, his left hip socket, uh, his shoulders pointed more towards the ball. So you can see that separation and that's what you got to be able to get. That's where the speed uh, ultimately goes into the hands and the bat, but it doesn't originate in the hands and the bat. And that's where a lot of coaches, I think, miss, miss the bus a little bit is they say they see the fast hands, they see the fast bat, but they don't realize that it really originated right through here. Okay, so moving on from the separation, a very good job there. Elbow goes back. Like I talked about my back elbow, uh, um, back elbow article a while ago, where that back elbow is back behind here and the bat's still up when his foot hits the ground. So again, just these, these are all just points of a really good swing. You see him now, he starts to really rotate open. And just notice the head here. Uh, the head is on a tripod. It doesn't move. It just rotates back and in towards the catcher uh, where you can see his, his face is clearly uh, pointed nose down at the ball or down at contact here. He has this really nice 
back shoulder drop. You can see his shoulder and the back go down underneath him. The bat follows back behind him. That's where lift starts to occur. So if you're a hitter and you're trying to generate more lift in your swing and more, more launch angle on average, you can't start it at the contact point. Okay, that's the wrong place. It has to start back here in his lower back as he starts to rotate his hips open in a, a very violent, uh, you know, merry-go-round fashion. The shoulders work more like a Ferris wheel and and really get underneath the ball in between the glove and the or between the catcher's mitt and the ball here. So you can really see the barrel work behind him and down and then snap as it accelerates sideways kind of towards uh, the first baseman this direction, right? And then he just keeps rotating from around his back and then into the ball. Obviously the arrows are a little bit tough because it's not three-dimensional, but you can I think you can understand. And when he gets to contact, you can really see the openness of his body. Really open here. Um, you can see his back knee, obviously. You can see his chest. So the whole flying open thing, if you're a coach and you're, you're new to the Baseball Rebellion and you haven't watched any of our videos yet, flying open is a good thing if done properly. If you use your hips and you separate from your shoulders, uh, but then the shoulders catch up to the to the hips right here. So the right here, the hips are in front of the shoulders, right? So you can see the, um, you can see his, you can see his front hip is way further to the left than his front shoulder, but then they catch up. So now everything's in the same place for the most part. You can really see a nice, really nice bend here. When then just to show that bend, you can see this curve along the outside of his back. It was much longer than the curve on the inside, so he's really got this nice shoulder tilt. Uh, to get to that pitch. And this is a, a mistake pitch. I mean, this is, you can see where the catcher wants it. Uh, you can see where it's left, kind of up and in over the plate, and uh, he takes care of it. And that's what makes some of these guys really good. You can see the upward extension through the ball. Not really much of a back foot move here because, again, the size kind of overtakes some things like that sometimes. But you still, still see guys like pull holes, players like that still move their back foot. All right, so if we go on. Uh, skip to the side view real quick. You're gonna obviously you're gonna see the same thing, but from a little bit different view. And, and this is if you're doing side view work as a parent, uh, you know, with your, with your camera. This is what I want you to really to really listen to and try to try to uh, replicate if you're working on it on your own. Obviously, you can contact us and, and come see us at the Baseball Rebellion, whether it's in person or you can hire us online to show you these things for you and help you through the process. But you're really gonna see these points. You're gonna see this back knee bent. Uh, you're going to see the hips starting to rotate open with the front knee bent. Now, again, like I said, I like to see his foot a little bit more open here. But, again, 260 pounds tends to make up for some mechanical mistakes. I mean, you can just look at the guy's legs right there. Um, head back over the back hip. Um, really nice position here. And, again, like I said, at foot strike, his bat's up and he's separated. So you can see the, the, the hips are pointed towards the stands. Right, the shoulder's more pointed towards where the ball's gonna be. It's a little more down than it needs to be, but I think you get the point. And the real evidence here of this is the stretch. You can see this jersey. I mean, look at his jersey. Look at his jersey on his arm, look at his jersey, especially in this area right here. You're gonna see lots of wrinkles, okay? And those wrinkles are only created with stretch. They would normally, hope, you know, in, I'm assuming the, the club he has all the, you know, the, the jerseys ironed out here. Uh, so we're gonna assume that he's creating this stretch on his own, which he is and then he fires it. He creates that tension and then he starts to turn it and fire it. And you're gonna see again how the barrel and his back shoulder work down behind him first. So really pay attention to this part of his body. You're gonna see him really crunch in the back right here. The shoulder starts to go up towards the sky and you're gonna see him really get that shoulder underneath the ball. And it almost looks like he's beat here a little bit because he just catches it right out in front of, you know, right out in front of his knee a little bit on the way up just enough. And you can see how the launch angle is different than, than the bat angle. So the launch angle, he catches this ball under the ball uh, to get maybe a little to get that height that, we, that he hits us out in center field, and the bat's a little bit lower. So he catches it at the right spot. Um, really pay attention to the head rotation back towards the ball, and notice that the head rotation is only the thing that happens. So his head stays in the picture frame, as I like to say, in the box. So I put this box around his head when his foot is to ground, and then as he rotates, you can see him stay in that box. That is so, so important. If you're a player watching this, or if you're a coach watching this, this has to be of a priority when you start talking about positions and get your hitters in ready to swing, which is this position. Uh, he stays behind what I call the turn line. So you can put this turn line right here from, his, from in front of his face to his foot, and he rotates behind it on that angle, which is able to get him that lift and again, not the fullest finish you'd see, two hands. Again, his back foot doesn't move a whole lot right here. You can see from the, from the hip turn, the hip rotation after the separation, like the foot kind of, you know, the heel comes up as normal, but he doesn't have that big jump. He's 260 pounds. So unless you have like a 13-year-old that's 260 pounds, 
I suggest we get that front foot open, we get the back foot moving a little bit, not a lot, just enough so that the hips can work uh, fully. But you can see the size of this guy, and he uses it, okay? But he's not only big, he has a good swing fundamentally. He's got separation, his head stays in a good spot, he swings up, so he, he's going to have success because the, the meat and potatoes in the middle of everything is really, really good, okay? Um, so I hope you liked the, enjoyed the breakdown today of Miguel Sano. Uh, you can watch him, obviously, uh, play him for the Twins. He's, he's a great player. He's going to be around for a while with this swing. Hopefully he stays healthy, but uh, keep an eye on him. And um, if you'd like the breakdown, please like it on YouTube, share it, you tweet it. Uh, you know, Give us a call if you have any questions about any of this or, you're, or maybe you're curious about some online lessons that we'd love to help you with. But, uh, again, uh, this guy is going to be good for a long time. So thank you guys for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks.